the way succulent plants have adapted to difficult growing conditions is nothing short of amazing. They have developed ways to stay alive where other living organisms would perish. One of the best and most curious survival techniques succulents are capable of is the Crassulacean acid metabolism. And this is what we're going to talk about today. We'll also cover what this particular adaptation means for succulents in cultivation where they don't really have to use it. This next part is going to be a bit geeky but I think very interesting. CAM is a photosynthesis method where plants can photosynthesize during the day but exchange gases at night to prevent water loss. Now that we have the CAM definition, let's dissect what exactly happens during photosynthesis and compare CAM plants with non-CAM plants. This will help us understand the implications for succulents grown in our backyards. The majority of plants photosynthesize and exchange gases during the day at the same time. During photosynthesis, plants take in sunlight and, through their stomata, carbon dioxide that they then convert to energy in form of sugar. Stomata are microscopic pores on the surface of leaves, stems and other organs of plants. The byproduct of photosynthesis is oxygen which also gets released by stomata along with water. Whenever stomata open to either absorb carbon dioxide or release oxygen, precious water is lost. According to studies, in most plants, the trigger for stomata to open are light and carbon dioxide. An interesting finding was that stomata do not open when water is present in order to absorb it, even when the plant is thirsty. They also do not open when oversaturated with water to release the excess. If you're interested in having a look through the studies and articles on this topic, I've linked them in the description. So, in order to be able to photosynthesize, plants must lose water whether they want to or not. But what succulents do to stop this water loss is nothing short of amazing. Just like most other plants, succulents also photosynthesize during the day. But unlike other plants, their stomata are not triggered by a light to open and remain firmly shut throughout the day. The stomata open during the night when it's cooler and therefore the water loss is minimal. This is the beauty of Crassulacean acid metabolism. For all of this to be possible, lots of chemical changes happen within succulents. The problem is that carbon dioxide absorbed at night is going to be needed during the day when light is also available. Succulents have this part covered as well. The carbon dioxide they absorb at night is converted and stored as malic acid in cells called vacuoles. When daylight comes, the malic acid is transported into chloroplast where photosynthesis takes place and is converted back to carbon dioxide. And now succulents can happily create energy for themselves from the sun without losing any water. Now, some of you may have noticed I have not really mentioned what happens with oxygen during CAM. This is because there's still a bit of discussion around this subject, and it would take a lot more explaining to cover the theories. CAM is just one adaptation succulent plants have that allows them to survive in climates where it doesn't rain for months. But it's one of the most important ones. Modern gardens and plant collections are full of non-native plants that come from completely different climates. And although succulent plants can be found on nearly all continents, they are often grown far away from home. It's also very likely that the climates are going to be more wet and humid than the arid places succulents have evolved in. Because of this, adaptations such as CAM can cause more harm than good in their adoptive homes. Diseases such as edema, rot, powdery mildew and others are all prevalent in succulents grown around the world. They are all water and humidity related and possibly made worse due to their stomata not transpiring enough water. Extra precautions often need to be undertaken and watering may have to be controlled to successfully grow many succulents. The good news is, just like other organisms, succulents can evolve in order to survive. 
studies have already shown that in some plants CAM can be reversed or switched off. As a grower I am intrigued by this as I have started noticing some of the cultivars I've initially had trouble with now tolerating rain and humidity well. This is however highly anecdotal and I have absolutely no way of proving any of it. It's just speculation and observation of my own plants. For instance, when I started growing lots of succulents, I've had a lot of trouble with Echeveria lola and fungal disease or edema. After raising a couple of generations from leaf, I no longer have this problem and all of my lola don't mind wet weather. I've seen this with others as well, but I've also seen no change with succulents such as Echeveria black knight or Romeo. They've always been very troublesome for me. As I said, I'm really just speculating, but I thought it interesting. But I would really like to hear from you as well, especially if you've been growing succulents for a while and have noticed some adaptations. So don't be shy and drop us a comment below. And that is that for today. I hope this video was interesting and if you'd like to learn more about succulents, you can subscribe or go to our website succulentgrowingtips.com. Thank you so very much for watching.